Think about how much fun the game of basketball would be if you were a great shooter. What if every time you stepped onto the basketball court, you knew that you were the best shooter in the gym? I'm Andy Enfield, and I've taught players at all levels, from grade schoolers to NBA all-stars, how to shoot the basketball correctly. And by watching this video, you too will be on your way to becoming the best shooter in the gym. Over 90% of all basketball players are streaky or inconsistent shooters. If you are a streaky shooter, you shoot the ball well sometimes and not so well at other times. You make a few shots in a row and then you can't make a shot. You have a good practice or game shooting the basketball and then the next game you struggle with your shooting are inconsistent. That's a streaky shooter. If you agree that you are a streaky or inconsistent shooter, you are not alone. Here's a question to you. Why do you think so many basketball players are inconsistent shooters? I hope you didn't say because players don't practice shooting, because all players practice shooting. However, most players at all levels practice shooting the wrong way. There is no magic in shooting. If you are a streaky or inconsistent shooter, you are not going to wake up one day and magically be a great shooter. You first need to learn the correct technique to shoot a basketball. Then you need to make a commitment to change. During this video, you will learn the all net shooting method the correct way to shoot a basketball. Then you will see the most common flaws in shooting techniques and be able to compare these to your own shooting form. I will show you how to make changes to correct your flaws and show you drills that you can work on individually to improve every day. I believe that almost all great shooters shoot the basketball with a technique like the all-net shooting method. The all-net shooting method has been proven to work at all levels and can be used by any player. So let's get started. The first thing I'll talk about is balance, because your feet and legs help control your body's motion, which can affect everything in your shot. For proper balance in a base, I recommend to stand with your feet shoulder width apart in a staggered stance, meaning your right foot is slightly in front of your left. I'm going to balls of my feet, and notice my toe of my right foot is tilted slightly to the corner of the backboard or the left part of the rim. Have good knee bend, and notice I have a lead shoulder and a lead foot. My right side is in front of my left side. Now if you're left-handed, you need to reverse everything I say and put your left side, meaning you have a lead foot and lead shoulder as well. During the shot, the body's motion should be up and forward towards the center of the basket. Get a feel for this motion by first practicing free throws and standstill jump shots. shooting the basketball on the move, you can shoot by coming to a jump stop by planting both feet at the same time, or by establishing a pivot foot, which is sometimes referred to as a one-two step. You need to control your body so that your balance does not negatively affect your shooting motion. Remember, the body's motion should be up and forward towards the center of the basket. Balance is very important, but having proper balance in every shot does not mean you'll be a great shooter. I know many players at all levels, from grade school to the NBA, that have great balance but are inconsistent shooters. So please remember this. Balance is the first important part of shooting, but balance alone does not make shots for you. Great shooters have complete control of the basketball and can make the ball go straight towards the center of the basket every time they step onto a court. How do you get this control? With your hands and arms. The next part of the all-net shooting method will teach you how to control the basketball and make it go straight. Spread your hand comfortably so your index and middle finger are in the center of the basketball. 
The ball rests on the fingertips and the pad at the base of the fingers, not on your palm. Notice that there's a small space between your palm and the ball. Do not put your shooting hand on the side of the ball because it will force you to incorrectly use the thumb of your off hand during the shot. Do not put your fingers too close together because the basketball will rest on the palm and you will lose control. Bend your wrist back and make an L with your upper arm and forearm. Notice the slight angle of your forearm. It is in a comfortable position. When you combine proper hand position and L position, you should be able to hold the basketball in one hand without the ball moving. Your elbow should be on the right side of your body over your right foot. The proper release point is on the right side of the body above the forehead. You should be able to see the basket with both of your eyes. Lock your elbow, then snap your wrist. The fingers should point down towards the ground with space between the fingers. The angle of your arm should be similar to the one seen here with the locked elbow out in front ending just above your eye. With the proper follow through you should be able to create the right amount of arc on your shot, meaning the ball should be at a good height and not flat throughout the shot. Make sure you hold your follow through until the ball reaches the basket. Following through correctly will cause good rotation and backspin of the basketball which will help give you great control. What do you aim for when you shoot a basketball? I recommend that you aim for the center of the basket. Great shooters can control the basketball and hit their target, which is the center of the basket. When you first begin practicing the all net shooting method, it is okay to look up with your eyes and watch the flight of the basketball to see if it has good rotation, but remember to keep your head still. After you have mastered the techniques and are confident that you are shooting the ball straight and with proper rotation, I recommend you keep your eyes focused on the basket until you complete your shot. With proper hand position, L position and follow through, you should be able to make the basketball go straight with good rotation with only one hand. This one handed L drill is the first drill I recommend practicing. Put your off hand down to the side and learn to control the basketball with only one hand. Start in the L position and bend your knees and bring the L down. As you push up with your legs, move the shooting arm up and follow through. Therefore, the arms and legs work together. Please pay close attention to your hand position, L position and follow through as well as the rotation. If you have smaller hands, you should still be able to do this drill as long as you keep your wrist bent back and straight. Your non-shooting hand is called your off hand. In my case, the off hand is my left hand. When holding the basketball in the L position, the off hand should be placed on the side of the basketball with the fingertips and the pad of the hand touching the basketball. Notice the thumb is placed on the side of the basketball and not behind the ball. In slow motion, the release of the shot looks like this. The shooting hand and arm go through the L position into the follow through while the off hand releases from the basketball. The shooting hand and arm shoot the basketball entirely. The off hand is only used to help position the basketball in the shooting hand and control the ball as you move quickly into and through your shooting motion. The off hand stays straight and the fingers and thumb point up towards the ceiling when you're done. The off arm should stay slightly bent at the elbow. When you complete your shot, the shooting hand should be a few inches higher than the off hand and there should be about five to six inches of space between your hands after your follow through. Remember. 
Your balance and motion are up and forward and there should be no motion to the side with your body or your hands. If your offhand releases properly from the basketball and your shooting arm and hand fall through correctly, the basketball will go straight with good rotation and you will be on your way to becoming a better shooter. Since most basketball players do not shoot the ball with great technique and therefore practice the wrong way, it's important to understand the most common flaws of shooting technique. Flaws in your shooting technique will most likely cause you to be an inconsistent shooter, and these flaws are generally developed at a young age and then are never corrected. As you watch this section, please compare your own shooting form and try to figure out if you have a similar flaw and then watch how to correct it. This is the most common flaw among shooters of all ages and levels. On the release, many players push or put pressure on the ball with the offhand. If you push the ball with your thumb or your whole hand, you are now a two-hand shooter and it is very difficult to make the ball go straight with great rotation. Many times, the rotation will have a little sideways spin or reduced rotation if you push with the offhand. Earlier, the L drill demonstrated that you can make the ball go straight when shooting with one hand. If you push the basketball with any part of your offhand during the shot, it is very difficult to control the ball. It is extremely important that you release the offhand correctly every time you shoot. When shooting the ball from the middle of the body, the angle of the shooting arm is not straight, and the shooting arm elbow sticks out slightly to the side. This can cause a number of problems. Many players lean to the left, dip their left shoulder, and tilt their head. When this happens, the follow through is to the side of the basket and not perfectly straight to the center of the basket. Notice the difference when the release point is corrected. The body, we're going to keep this in the right center, the release point drill, keep that wrist bent back. Okay, we're going to shoot from right there. Go ahead. Good. Again. This flaw is more prevalent in taller players. If you bring the ball too far back in your shooting motion, the angle of your shooting arm flattens out and the follow through will not be at the proper angle. This motion can result in a shot with too little or too much arc as well as a decrease in accuracy. The release is also much slower because the shooting motion goes all the way back and then all the way forward. The proper release point is up on the right center of your body above the front of your forehead. We're going to keep it out in front with this release point right there. Good. The only shooting device I use when coaching players is a shooting strap because it helps you improve your shooting technique. This device restrains your off hand or thumb from turning and pushing the basketball and prevents the off arm from completely extending. I have used this shooting strap while coaching MBA, college, high school and grade school players and this device has proven to be very effective for players at all levels. Since the shooting strap allows you to hold the basketball just like you do in a game, you can use this device while practicing and over time, it will train your offhand to release properly from the basketball. It's important that you practice the one-handed L drill to get used to the feel of controlling the basketball with your shooting hand and arm. Once you perfect the L drill, try these drills. I put the ball in the L position. Right here, this is the first drill. This is a release point drill. For this drill, place your off hand in the proper position on the side of the basketball and get into the L position. Start the shot at the release point, which is on the right side just above the forehead. Bend your knees and follow through. You will not be able to do this drill very far from the basket because there is no swinging motion with your arms to create power. Therefore, practice this drill close to the basket. 
The purpose of this drill is not only to shoot with correct form, but to feel a proper release point, as many players need to raise the release point as they get older and stronger. If you are younger and have difficulty with this high release point, you can skip this drill and focus on the drill for younger players which you will see in a few minutes. In the drill for younger players, the release point is lower. In this drill, start the shot at chest level or even slightly lower than chest level. Bend your knees and go through the shooting motion. Concentrate on your hand position, held position, follow through, and your off hand. Make sure the off hand releases properly from the basketball when your shooting arm and hand make the ball go straight. Start close to the basket and stay there until you perfect this technique. Hold your follow through and look up at your hands to see if your hands shot the ball properly. Keep that left hand straight. Nice. Keep going. If you are having trouble with the proper release of your off hand, you should use a shooting strap to help restrain your off hand and arm. The two previous drills can be done with and without the shooting strap. I recommend using the shooting strap as much as necessary until you know that you can shoot the basketball correctly. If you are younger or smaller, start the shot at your waist out in front of your body. As you bend your knees, bring the ball down, first away from your body and then back towards your body in a small circular motion. As you push up with your legs, complete the circular motion with your arms and hands and go straight into the follow through. Make sure the ball is in front of you over your right foot during the entire circular motion and follow through. This lower beginning point in the circular motion help create the necessary power to get the ball to the basket. You can even take a step with your right foot, stepping into your shot to create even more momentum and power. However, you need to keep the ball out in front of you the entire time. Do not get your power by tilting to the side or by pushing with two hands. It's much better to have perfect form with a low release point than it is to develop bad habits. As you get bigger and stronger, you can move your release point up over time. The most important part of a free throw is your shooting technique. You also need a routine to relax you in preparation to shoot the basketball. Here's a routine that I recommend. First, I make sure that my foot is centered on the free throw line and tilted slightly toward the left of the basket. I take three dribbles. I place my fingers on the seams of the ball. I take a deep breath while extended down and focus on the center of the basket. I then go into my shooting motion and hold my follow through. If you'd like, be creative and make your own routine. But I want you to remember, your routine does not make shots for you. Your technique does. If you have to jump at the foul line, 
Move back a few inches and jump up and forward with a controlled jump. If you are younger, you might have to lower your release point and use a circular motion to get the necessary power to shoot with the proper technique. While shooting a jump shot, use the swinging motion of your arms and hands to create momentum. You need to get the ball up to the proper release point while you jump and then release the basketball just before the top or peak of your jump. Do not pause at the top of your jump before releasing the ball. This will cause your momentum to stop and most likely you will develop a hesitation or hitch in your shooting motion which will decrease your range and accuracy. Remember, use a swinging motion to create momentum and release the ball just before the top of your jump. The more momentum you can create, the better range you will have. If you are younger, you can use a jumping set shot. Use the swinging motion or a circular motion to create power. The key is to step into the pass, catch the ball, and swing the ball into the circular motion. As you are adjusting and changing your shooting technique, you need to start with set shots close to the basket so that you can train your arms and hands so that your shooting motion becomes muscle memory. If you practice enough, your new shooting form will become natural. After you have spent many hours close to the basket and your new shooting technique feels comfortable, speed up your shooting motion to gain speed. Practice shooting jump shots off the dribble off the pass and off your individual offensive moves. You must be very aware of how your shooting form changes when you speed up your motion to gain speed. I have seen many players completely change their shooting techniques when they shoot off the dribble or in other fast game situations. It is extremely important that you shoot the basketball with the same shooting technique at all times. There are a few keys to releasing a shot quickly. First, you must have the proper balance and be prepared to shoot the ball. Once you decide to shoot the basketball, any excess steps with your feet or unnecessary motion with your arms should be eliminated. Your momentum should be transferred into the shooting motion as you are catching the basketball. Here are three drills that can improve the quickness of your release. First is the run at the shooter drill. In this drill, the passer starts underneath the basket passes the ball, and then runs at the shooter and puts a hand in the face or tries to block the shot. The keys for a quick release in this drill are to move the feet quickly into shooting position, and then to move the basketball very quickly with the hands into and through the shooting motion. As a shooter gets more comfortable with the drill, the passer can move closer and closer to the shooter so that the shooter does not have as much time to shoot the basketball. This drill is great for quickness of release as well as concentrating under pressure with a hand in the face. Second is the quick hands drill. In this drill, the shooter starts with the basketball just below chest level, ready to shoot the basketball. 
the defender extends the arm so that the hand is even with the ball. The goal of the shooter is to release the basketball with perfect form before the defense can react. This drill forces the shooter to move the hands very quickly up through the shooting motion to the release point and shoot the basketball before the defense can disrupt the shot. Third is the rapid fire drill. In this drill, use two basketballs to create a rapid pace so that the shooter has to shoot the basketball with a quick release and then immediately prepare for the next shot. Each shot should be completed entirely with the correct follow through before the shooter gets ready for the next shot. This drill teaches a shooter to be quick and efficient with shot preparation and the release. As a young player, I had poor shooting technique and was an inconsistent shooter. However, I made adjustments in my own shooting technique, so I know what it takes to change. When you change your shooting technique, you have to be patient and not get discouraged. Many times, players have been shooting the basketball for many years the wrong way and have developed bad habits. Changing a habit after many years is difficult, but definitely can be done with great success. To change and become a great shooter, you need to do three things. Number one, realize why you are a streaky or inconsistent shooter. Number two, learn the correct technique to shoot the basketball. Number three, practice the correct technique over and over. By watching this video, you should be able to realize why you are a streaky or inconsistent shooter and you should be able to learn the correct shooting technique. I can only recommend that you practice the correct way, but I can't practice for you. In order to change, you have to spend hours and hours by yourself practicing and take it step by step. If you have the passion, you can become a great shooter. Just think how much fun the game of basketball would be if you were the best shooter in the gym.